Hi everybody, Paul here again. For quite some time I was racking my brain trying to figure out why the electrical charging system on my lawnmower wouldn't work right. Well, I finally figured it out, so I want to share with you what it was doing and how I fixed it, which turned out to be a real eye-opener, so stay tuned. If you have a small gas engine with a 12-volt battery, then that means you have an electrical charging system. These charging systems are necessary to operate electrical accessories like electric start, electric PTO, which stands for power takeoff, electric lights, and other electrical accessories. So here's what my lawnmower started doing. While cutting the grass, the electric PTO, which turns the cutting blades on, started turning off. As long as I let the engine continue to run after the PTO shut off, then eventually I was always able to turn the PTO back on, but then eventually again the PTO would turn back off. So next I checked the charging system with the digital multimeter. The normal charging voltage going to the battery should be somewhere between 14 to 15 DC volts when the engine is at full throttle. Not only was there not enough voltage going to the battery, but I also found that as soon as I turned on the PTO, the battery voltage started dropping. Once the battery voltage dropped low enough, the PTO would turn off. After checking the entire charging system, the only conclusion that I could come to was this voltage regulator that I'm holding in my hand was faulty. These voltage regulators convert AC voltage from the engine to DC voltage which is then sent to the battery. Next I went on eBay to purchase the specified OEM voltage regulator for the Kawasaki engine on my lawnmower. I was unable to find a genuine Kawasaki OEM, but I did find some off-brands matching the exact same model number as the Kawasaki OEM, which were made in China. I bought two just so I'd have a spare. Once I received these, I installed the one, but I still had the exact same problem. Next I installed the second one, but again, I still had the exact same problem. This led me to believe that something else was wrong and that it was not a faulty voltage regulator. To make a long story short, after a lot of wasted time, energy, and frustration, I eventually found a genuine Kawasaki OEM voltage regulator which I installed and now everything works just fine. So the big takeaway from this entire video is this is another perfect example of why you should use genuine OEM replacement parts, particularly electrical parts. Don't forget that you usually get what you pay for. Yes, they may cost more, but in the long run, it can save you a lot of wasted time, energy, and frustration. I hope you found this helpful, and if you like this video, please hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and please be sure to subscribe. God bless you and have a great day. Bye for now. Okay, Sparky. Wait. <laughs>